Hello and welcome to the MBS Show, episode 86. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Daniel Anthony. Good evening, Norman. Good evening, Dan. How are you doing, man? I'm rather tired. It's going to be another very long week in school. Oh, yeah. Tell me about it, man. I had the Are longest you about what? Day. You don't go to school. I know, but I... Okay, funny enough. Besides going to an engagement party, I went to visit my old lecturer. They were doing some kind of event at some kind of artsy fancy place. I got to sit down with her and talk with her about stuff. I mentioned that I was doing the show and I interviewed a lot of people. Uh, she was kind of okay up until I showed her Children of the Night. After that, she was really interested in what I was doing. Oh, okay. I thought like something went wrong right there. <laughs> nope. Not yet, man. Not yet, man. But anyway, also joining us today is James Cork. Hello there, Norman. Hi, Anthony. Hi, James. Hi, James. Hola. Mi nombre es Norman Sanzo. <laughs> Did I got it right? Oh, please stop that. <laughs> You're making my country cry. Yeah, you actually did a pretty good job. Uh, there's people who even have trouble making making that far into Spanish. Yeah, there was this stupid joke that I read, like, uno, dos, tres, cuadros. Yeah, what comes <laughs> next? I know you want me. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, God, that's so bad. No. Uh, <laughs> by the way, no, Danny, I don't, uh, Daniel, I don't go to school either, but I know what you're going through the pain and the pressure and all that because I hate it in school when I had exams or when I had to present projects or papers. I always got under pressure and I, oh God, how am I going to get this done so I can totally understand you. Thankfully, I don't have to suffer that anymore. So, uh uh-huh, jokes on you. We we suffer through something else. It's called life. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. that's true. It's stupid life. (laughs) Anyway. On this episode, we don't have a guest because everyone's busy. Like what James says, it's the end of October. People are having Halloween parties or they're getting ready for Halloween parties. Making their fancy costumes. Yeah, and also um, getting through finals. <laughs> yeah, or they are preparing for the uh, the conventions oh, that yeah. they're going to. So yeah, there's a lot of things going on. True, true. And after that, it'll be the Christmas rush. True that. But anyway, we have to keep moving on because, as they always say, the show must go on. Mm-hmm. It's very important when doing a podcast that you never stop doing it. Even if you have to scrunch the bottom of the barrel for something to talk about, never stop it because you stop doing it one day, then you start finding excuses to not do it the rest of the days. Yes. And uh, then the podcast goes as tail. You have to be careful with that. That's true, man. That's true. Better late than never. But anyway, let's move on to the next topic. And in housekeeping, well, it's not going to be fun without GLaDOS, but hey, you have to deal with me. On November 2nd, the MBS show crew will be participating in Extra Life 2013. Extra Life 2013 is a 25-hour gaming marathon to raise money for Sick Kids Hospital Toronto. What to expect during that 25-hour gaming marathon? Well, expect to be a part of the live stream with me. You can join me in the game and possibly see me rage at the game. Interact with the guests during the live stream and get your answers question to get, get your questions answered by them. <laughs> it's a very special stream where you get to give an answer and the host gets to ask a question somewhat related to that answer. Well, you know what's that game called? I, I, Jeopardy? I don't remember. But anyway, um, the yeah, guest... Yeah, it is Jeopardy. Hey, I got it right. Guest that will be joining us is friend of the show, James Cork. And sketchy sounds from EFN, sketchy sound live songcast, and the talented Lionheart cartoon from Duo Cartoonists. And if I remember right, Screwball from Stable Rooney, my friend, will join us too. We appreciate if you could donate to this good cause. Together we can help kids and improve their experience in hospital. Links to the donation will be in the show notes. It's for charity people, help out. Indeed. Do this, guys, because you get to see me suffer playing games for 25 hours. It may sound fun, but think about it. G, 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 you know, they say playing games is for fun, and now you're saying you're going to suffer playing games. Okay, uh, have you guys heard the term of too much of a good thing is a bad thing? This is it. <laughs> then in that case, we're going to have to play you games that are bad. Oh, God, <laughs> no. We're but going to any... start with Duke Nukem Forever. Oh, God, no. And then we go with E.T. for the Atari 2600. Oh, God, no. 
<laughs> then we finish with Mother Truckers and then Big Rigs. Yes, oh God, no. that's a perfect, yeah. Perfect and we plan. play Pong for four hours after that and we <laughs> still have time. Oh, God. But yes. anyway, anyway, um, I want to give a shout out. Well, it's too early in the shout out section, but I just need to give it out to Kitsune Ritsu. He's an awesome guy. He donated 40 bucks to the team and good to you, man. So anyway, let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is news time. In today's news time, and to play reveals information on My Little Pony CCG Team Dex. Enterplay has revealed information on their upcoming collectible card game coming this November. They will have two team decks and one two-player starter set. The first team deck is a Rainbow Dash and Rarity team deck, and the second team deck is a Twilight Sparkle and Applejack team deck. And the two-player starter will include Fluttershy and Pinkie Pie. All of this set includes 59 cards times two for the two-player set. Links can be found in the show notes. So, information have been revealed and if you guys notice an interview on EQD, a guy interviewed the creators of the card game and this is looking out to be a really fun game. Yeah, but 59, why like a prime number for the cards? Well, I'm not 100% sure. From what I understand is they only have 45 cards for the deck and 10 troublemakers for the troublemakers slots. That's what I remember, but I don't... The heck is a troublemaker? Well, it's... You know what? I'm just going to leave that out until we have the deck to compare or do a review of because I got no idea. No, I, I never heard of this. Like, is... Troublemaker card? Is that like permission to do crap? You're missing Magic the Gathering, which is... This is obviously based off with Munchkin. You have to be careful. Not really. From what I ha- from the discussion I had with um, Lionheart, he said that it's more to a kin of the Star Trek uh, card game where there's yeah I saw the way it was yeah. yeah it's very very much like the Star Trek one but the Troublemaker card isn't a Munchkin card I got no idea it's it's the same thing as a scenario I don't know it's basically if you play Star Trek it's almost the same I haven't so this is going to be new for me but you know what I'm talking about the team decks like they're mixing two of the main six if you're a Rainbow Dash fan and you hate rarity you need to get the team deck which has rarity also <laughs> how dare you hate rarity anyway yeah it's true but you don't like Rainbow Dash that much so eh. <laughs> I like Rainbow Dash I like seriously I like all of the main six except well no I like I, I like all of the main six I don't have any preference uh, uh, however I have to say the card games the card game the, the CCG of MLP is really ridiculous but I am a Magic the Gathering fan and I like the idea of having the main six as kind of like planeswalkers mm-hmm <laughs> Well, they they did talk about it in that interview, why the reason they couldn't have the ponies battle with each other. It goes against the uh, element of the show where it's more about friendship and helping one another. You know, they could just put in one more card, the 60th card being Discord. When you play that card, everybody fights. Well, technically, there is a Discord card in the Troublemaker pile. But you have enough games that uh, card games that are all about fighting. I mean, I already said Munchkin. Then you have Legend of the Five Rings. You have Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, Magic the Gathering, of course, Pokemon. They're all about fighting, about killing, and all that. That's fine, but it can get repetitive. Mm-hmm. This card game offers some sort of option besides fighting. You have ways to figure out things or win battles. It's not all about fighting and killing and maiming and I'm going to take your life points away and I'm going to throw you this many. Oh my god, you depleted my mana pool. It's like <laughs> all the card games are like that. And true, then this one true. comes out and it's like every other uh, RPG game that I saw based on MLP, like the Savage Worlds of My Little Pony Edition. That uh, that RPG rulebook has no rules for it has rules for fighting but it condones fighting because if you fight you lose all the experience points that you gain so it encourages you to find other ways to win battles and win games I like how they did that for uh, for the card game because the Savage World things that's fan made but this is official mm-hmm. and I'm like I am so happy they are going through that road in, in official merchandise especially when it comes to CCGs I, can, I I love to get one of those decks. The problem is that they are crazy expensive. Looking at the price here, it's not that bad because according to the Enterplay website, you can get the team deck for $10.99. So it's not that expensive, really. For what? what for a deck? Yen. Yeah, for a team deck. I was like, 10 for yen team, for a team deck? I'll take 10. 
No, no, that, that's super expensive. That's a lot of money. I paid five euros for a deck here in no. my country. James, you have to remember, this is dollars. Yeah, that's it. I mean, in dollars, five euros is like seven dollars. Yeah, but the thing is, it's a starter kit. So you wow. have 59 cards with a rule book, a playmat, I think so, and well, and one foil card. It's Let's so see bad. if they yeah. send it to you to your country. Where's your spin? Yeah, uh, but uh, I don't know. I don't know if they ship there. But you know, the, those foil cards that come with every single special deck. That's something that, that there is a term to describe those kind of things in the industry. They call it fool's gold. Is because they are foil cards. They are rare, but everybody has them because you can go to your to your. A local store and get the cards, oh, true, and that's yeah. it. You you get a foil card. That is nothing special about them. You know, if each if each deck came with an with an exclusive uh, uh, random foil card, that would be fa- that would be better. Not really, because of the planning and stuff. Because when you want to plan something and to get people interested, it's better to have some set goals for people to get and get the boosters at random. No, but then then have a deck. That doesn't need foil cards because decks decks don't need foil cards, and have a random foil card that you can either use on the deck or leave it aside. Like Daniel already said, the deck has fifty nine cards. Why not making card sixty a foil card that is like uh, not necessary for the deck, and you can keep it as a collector's item and it's random for every single deck that is out. Well, James, you can because the. Um, Rainbow Dash foil card is just the starter or the friend that you can flip around. You know, that has two sides. That's the card. And when they give you a rarity inside there, it means that you can instead use rarity as your starter. Yeah, by the way, that's weird because I saw that the rarity uh, card is not a rare card. It's kind of like uncommon. Common. And I'm like, how dare you make rarity uncommon card? <laughs> that's not a word. God damn it. Uh, well, I don't care if you have duh, to censor that. I don't name. care about this. <laughs> Hello. Shut up. <laughs> so, but anyway, um, God, anyway, uh, if you like Pinkie Pie and Fluttershy, you're gonna be, um, you're gonna have a good time because they're in the two player set and both of them are foil. But anyway, next thing you know, you open up, they're all fifty nine Pinkie. Oh Pie. God. <laughs> but anyway, that's too many Pinkie Pies. Oh. Exactly. Oh God, that would be brilliant. <laughs> that would be a brilliant deck. All of the cards are Pinkie Pies. Fun. And then the sad one's the real one. So if you play that card, all other Pinkie Pies instantly get defeated. Go into this card. Actually, party. you know what? No joke on this. There was a Pokemon deck that it was like all psychic energies and four Mewtwo's. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. That is going to be hard to play. Weapon of mass destruction. <laughs> Actually, that that deck won kind of a couple of championships because it was really effective. Oh, God. <laughs> oh. Well, um, I got no comment because I don't play Pokemon. But anyway, let's move on before we insult many card players. Uh, Dan, why don't you take this one? Yeah, sure, no problem. Alright then, MLP Firefly has her own book now. So six episodes back, wow, Norman, you count this. We talk about how Generation 1 Pony Firefly is going to have her own book. And it was going to include a Firefly brushable with a star-shaped brush. Gee, looks like they don't make everything heart-shaped these days. The wait is over and pictures of the products are out and we did not see this coming at all. The brushable is of a Gen 1 pony figure. And it doesn't end there. It's not the newer model that we have now. And the contents of the book, we presume them to be illustrations of Generation 1 ponies. Links can be found in the show notes. So guys, I don't know, blast from the past? I personally love this idea. Remember that there have been fans of MLP ever since the original generation. And lately, Hasbro has been preferring a lot of the brownies, like the ones that came with Generation 4. It's like, oh, brownies, brownies, yeah. And then the old fans have been like, but what about us? So this is a great shout-out to the old generations. And out of all the other characters that they could have picked, out of all the others, they have to pick Lauren Faust's favorite, which Ah. was Firefly. So I don't know if this, this is like kind of like related to Lauren Faust's like going, now you see, we are going to pick Lauren Faust's favorite uh, character in the show. Even though she didn't watch the show, she just liked the, the toys. And then she made on her, own, her own stories. But it's kind of interesting that I thought they would go with Applejack. Because, you know, Applejack was the only character they could keep from true, the true. old generations. But then, th- then they picked Firefly. And it's funny... Because they couldn't use the name Firefly for the TV show because, you know, uh, 
20th Century Fox owns the rights on the name Firefly because of the Josh Whedon TV series. But they could pick it for the book and the toy. So that's really, really intriguing. Is maybe a Firefly character coming on Season 4? Maybe? Well, I have the hit cannon here where... Um, legal, le- legally, where they can't use it because of legal issue, and somehow they kind of uh, wiggled their way around. Yeah, they wiggle their way around because Firefly is technically a name of an insect. So if you were to spin it that way and do some funny things with it, you can do it. Because here's proof: they clearly state that this is a Firefly brushable. Generation one, be, be that as it is, it's still Firefly. So the high probability of Firefly coming in newer generations, maybe. You. I mean, like kids. I don't know what you're thinking, especially if you're three or four years old listening to this. I don't know why they're calling a horse a Firefly. Doesn't make sense. <laughs> but I'm really hoping maybe at the end of this book, you flip through the pages at the end, and it's like a fast forward through her life, and then she has this kid that's this tiny little blue pony in mm-hmm. the car, just something like that and then it just ends I and it's hope, like <gasps> I hope that is uh, that, that is like high hopes for the for the newer fans but personally I don't think they're going to go that route yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is this is clearly a blast from the past they are doing this for the old school fans and you know what love to them because they are the original guys they are the original fans that thanks to them this franchise kept going forward mm-hmm. and they don't get enough recognition that's that you know what I hate when people go oh brownies we're the original ones <clears throat> You are not. You didn't jump in the bandwagon either. You just started liking something because it had a different approach. But there were people liking it before you. Mm-hmm. They were the original hipsters. <laughs> Yay, they were yeah. the funny hipsters. Yeah, true that, true that. Well, but seriously, um, good on them, man, because uh, Generation 1, Brushy, they, they need the love because the Generation 4 people, they get a lot of stuff. And the G1 people... They don't get much loves anymore. They had their glory, to be honest. Well, true that. But you know, like, why does Optimus Prime have a Generation 1 remake? Why couldn't the ponies have their own thing? And true. with this, it's their own thing, man. You have to show respect to the originals. Because of Firefly, the pony that we love, the show and all, exists. Mm-hmm. One of the reasons, Not really. Firefly, Bonnie Zachary. No, if it hadn't been for... Um, yeah, okay, Bonnie Sackerley created it, but if it hadn't been for Roland Faust taking, taking interest on these uh, characters and having her imagination and being uh, interested in developing stories for them, we couldn't have Rainbow Dash, Rarity, Applejack, uh, Fluttershy, Pinky, Twilight, and the rest of the cast. We wouldn't have any of them. Yep, I mean, we have to cool. think that... Th- we have to think that ridiculous... A cow-looking, uh, <laughs> colorful horse. It does look like a cow. And if you hadn't been for that stupid-looking toy, we wouldn't have something that has improved people's lives, has moved them to improve the, the, the lives of others, and uh, that has changed so many small things, but on the long run, it has made kind of an impact. People, we are getting referenced in Saturday Night Live. Mm-hmm. Can you can you imagine, and not in a destructive way, but in a actually genuinely funny way? Can you imagine any other fan base that gets a spot on Saturday Night Live and it's actually funny and enjoyable? Not many can do that. That's true. That's true. Mm-hmm. But anyway, thank you, Generation One fans, because of your interest. Hasbro says, let's try to do something new. <laughs> you know something? The Generation 1 fans back then, it's been, 20, it's been 30 years. So, yeah, maybe they're well, among us right now and be like, uh-huh, yep, just look at all them G4 boys. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah, it's like, look at, look at all these ponies. They look so Japanese. Us. No, that, seriously, you know, the toys you know something? look Japanese. That was what? my reaction to the first time I ever watched MLP. I saw the eyes and like, this looks so Japanese. Yeah, same thing. Same thing. I thought I was like, oh wow, this is like My Little Pony, but with anime. It's so awesome. Look at the lines and the style. The eyes. And it's the eyes. Yeah, the eyes as well. They're big and brown and very expressive. You want to know what I thought about it originally? Yes, go. It was like, huh, this looks like the three point five chibi ponies Japanese style, but done better and right. Wow, you knew about the G3.5 ones before you knew about the Generation 4 ones? I was kind of looking through stuff. Like, I, I think it was... Well, they advertised it in Malaysian cinema. No. 
yeah, they did advertise it. So I mean, like it or not, you're sitting there with the popcorn, you're watching it, and you yeah. realize. Then the theme that old the rock song theme song is playing and gets stuck in your my head. My little pony, my little pony. Ah, <laughs> ah, ah. <laughs> anyway. No, they didn't play the intro sequence. They played that and it was like collect all today or something like that. I don't know. Beg your parents for money, and if they don't give you money, cry, cry at them. Disney told you that crying solves everything. Keep crying at them. Cry some more. And then the next advertisement is Motorola. Stop pestering your parents until they buy three. (laughs) So okay, you know what? Let's move on because that's going nowhere. (laughs) Uh, Anyway, on uh, to end on a high note. Thank you, G One fans. You're awesome. So moving on to the next topic, it's well. Since we don't have much to discuss about, let's go to what are we doing? So eating a hamburger while driving and being on the show or something like that. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go first. There's a piano in the car as well. <laughs> wow. Oh boy. Your car is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> then you're so cray cray. Anyway, um with me, let's see. I recently got a 3DS and I've been playing Pokemon X on it. So yay! It's so much fun. And today I've learned that there's EV and IV and it's so confusing it has to do with breeding and stuff like oh god can you try no. that again in English uh, it is English I could you were speaking in letters I know but anyway it's so hardcore like my friend played them it's super hardcore so today the MBS show is the MB Pokemon show yay Pokemon <laughs> god dang no but anyway I've been busy my time with Pokemon X and oh I'm talking about video games I'm doing a 25 hour live stream coming next week <laughs> or well as we are recording it's next week when the show is released it's on a Tuesday or yeah it's on a Tuesday so it's gonna be like what Wednesday Thursday Friday oh in four days oh my you can knock on Norman's door he answers with bloodshot eyes what do you want <laughs> true indeed but anyway yeah 25 hour of gaming marathon to raise money for the Children's Miracle Network. I be I'll be raising funds for Sick Kids Hospital Toronto. So please donate, guys. It's gonna be fun. I can totally imagine and you pause have... a game and the Salvation Army is at your door, like for donations. No, I'm already donating to Sick Kids. Bye bye. <laughs> no, I'm busy doing charity work. Now get out. <laughs> no, but still, but still, um, I would appreciate it if you can come on the stream, have fun, talk about stuff. Um, I've managed to get a few people on, like James, the amazing James Cork. He's Spanish, so he's gonna help uh, help me with the stream and stuff. <laughs> you said that like that's an answer to me. Okay, this is James Cork. He's Spanish. Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, is that, <laughs> my accent is not giving it away or anything. No, that was this totally long delay um, that it, he said James Cork is Spanish, and all listeners go. <gasps> I thought he was Indonesian. No, you, you know, the, the Spanish is like sexy. It's so sexy. No, but actually, oh, you know, within no. this region, people uh. would mistake you for Filipino, really. Because uh, oh, no. Filipinos speak Spanish as well. Go to hell. I don't speak like a... Oh, <laughs> 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 okay. well, look at that Spanish fright, man. But anyway, um, well, do come. Because uh, on a tangent, we also have sketchy sound from EFN and also screwball from EFN. And I've heard that Five Iron and Alpha might try and come down to play Team Fortress 2 with me. So that might work. And also Kelpin from EQD. He's going to come in too. Kelpin is coming? I, I hope so. He said he's tried. I love Kelpin. Awesome. Yay. Kelpin and is also, awesome. Um, yeah, he is. He's the man. And also um, Silver Eagle from PVL. He said that he wants to challenge me to Skullgirl. So yay! I should... Practice, but I don't want to practice because I want to make a fool of myself. So anyway, um, yeah, those games. Um, how should I play those games, or what the plan for those games is? Basically, like this: I'll be playing one game for every hour and change to another game the next. But if I get a hundred dollar worth of donations during that hour, you have the decision of saying keep playing or change to this game. So for every hundred. I keep playing or change the game according to what you want. If I don't hit a hundred, I'll pick the game that I want. So it's gonna be yeah, fun. Yeah, we'll be playing Pong. Oh god! If I can get it running on Steam, but 
already way up. That's my... Must it run on Steam? I'm trying to run on Steam. Like, Steam. No, you know, you should take a ladder, go up to your loft. You know where Button's mom keeps that machine? Uh, no. But anyway, those are my projects. What machine in particular? The Pong, the Pong machine. machine. In Button's mom adventure. No, Button's mom. No, it's Button's yeah. adventure. Button's mom's <laughs> adventures do. What are you watching? Move! Move! Let's move, Dan! No, Dan, what are you doing? What's your project? No, he's watching the... That's not a word! ...version of it. Oh, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of edits going to be in the show. <laughs> oh, don't edit that. That was a funny joke. God damn it. <laughs> Kids, if you're wondering what he just said, um, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, Dan, what about you? What projects do you have? Me? What projects do I have? Well, I've got a project for advanced TV production. I got a project for consumer behavior class, EDL 2016 and um, BMC 3114 and <laughs> a lot of homework. Uh, those are invalid subject codes. Don't bother looking for them. But yeah, basically nothing much. Life has been such. University is ending soon, so hopefully I get through this. Oh, good then luck, man. Free. Wish you the best. Thank you very much. So I heard that you're involved in this current convention that we heard of, that I heard of you being involved in being part of convention. Yeah, you heard me speak at the awesome keynote at uh, Cantalot University's convention um, reveal. That was a couple of weeks ago. And uh, yeah, I'm involved in that as well. We're going to start our crowdfunding on the 1st of November. If you haven't heard about it, go on over to cantalotuniversity.com. We'll put that link in the show notes so it's easy to find. And uh, yeah, it'll be 21st to 22nd, June 2014 in sunny Singapore. Awesome. Because Singapore is a really easy country because no matter how big Malaysia is, nobody knows where that is. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, I was in the UK a few years back, and my brother and I were talking in the most Malaysian way imaginable. Not because we wanted to, but because we just did. You know, all like, you can just go on over back to the hotel, lah. Don't have to go and come and talk to me, lah. And this woman approaches, are you from Singapore? I'm like, what? <laughs> You're using that law, that, that slang. Is it Singaporean? No, we're Malaysian, ma'am. <laughs> I'm like, great, we just lost our national identity on an international level. <laughs> Malaysians, what the heck are you doing? Well, I got no idea. Step up the game! No, but seriously, it was it's true that Singapore is kind of more recognized than we are. True, true. In terms of technology and stuff. But you know what? Still, Singapore is a good country to visit. It's fun. I mean, of course, they have it easy. They don't have to lay a few million kilometers of fiber optic cables and things like that just to wire up the country. Heck, you put a router in the middle of the city and you have Wi-Fi everywhere. Then I think it takes... Like there's a Starbucks in the city center on the 20th floor and everybody's using it. <laughs> I think it takes more than that. But anyway, um, we'll be looking forward to the convention and I hope we can get to talk to the convention people soon enough. Oh yes, you're talking to me, so that's good enough. Yay! <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> so anyway, James, what about you? Well, about my personal projects, I am doing some. I was doing something for Nightmare Night that's already uh, finished, and by the time this comes out, people are going to see it on Tumblr. It's being fully completed, fully commissioned, and right now I'm just doing that, getting commissions out of the way because thanks to uh, everyone's donations uh, during the, the stream a few weeks ago, I managed to uh, pay all the debts and have a Yay! very nice cash of money to help me out with upcoming bills uh, that gives me enough time to clear out my commission list and get more uh, that's wonderful uh, besides that I am going to help out Norman with his uh, video game live stream on the 2nd of, of November and I think that's pretty much about it I, I, I'm not doing much thing besides waiting for season 4 to show up well, my god soon, it's taking forever soon, soon. It's a month away, man, a month away. It's going to be, it's going to be there. It's going to be awesome. But yeah, I mean, it's fantastic that I managed to recover and I wouldn't be able to do that without you guys' help. And I mean, everybody. Yeah. Every single person who reblogged, talked about this, brought it up, was in the stream with me or was in the stream with me on Spirit. You, you guys helped me get through this and I am all shades of thankful and, and, and proud and humbled like this happened and I still, I cannot believe it still. It happened. And it's like, this was so surreal. I've never had anybody throw so much money at me because they wanted to help me out. It's like, oh, I'm worth something. It feels so good. But yeah, thank you all. You're awesome, man. You're awesome, man. You deserve the help, man. Hmm. Yeah, it's great to hear that, that you recovered. It's great, it's great to hear that you're back on your feet again. Thank you. I am definitely, I'm back and kicking. No doubt. Awesome. And James, thank you for helping me out in 
the stream or my event coming soon because it's going to be hard for me and well having someone there to help me is going to be fun thanks oh no problem man yes thanks in advance thanks in advance how much how much time did you plan to do that for oh i got no idea man 25 hours baby <laughs> oh wait you're right it's 25 hours well in that case i will join you in uh uh two times it's like uh, maybe at the beginning and then towards the end I'm cool with that, man. I hope somebody can be in between because, oh, God, I need some motivation. Yeah, I'll come in the middle. I can't promise the motivation when I can try to come. <laughs> okay. No, but James... It'll be, it'll be like you, you can play either some MMO or something like that and you drop something on the floor. Like, you drop that. Yeah, I meant to drop <laughs> it. Don't pick it up. It's worth something. You sell it. Take Too it many. to the shop by the side there and sell it. I don't care if it's worth one gold. You sell it. <laughs> but what's the fun on playing an MMO? Everybody's playing MMOs lately. Like, that's one of the... That's one of the most less played things ever. MMOs. And I'm like, I'm getting tired of seeing characters walking around on the open environment that looks grey because every open environment looks either grey or brown or or very 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 light black mm. so it's like this is so repetitive I've seen this before a million times why not play something different so I, I think I support the idea of playing <laughs> Super Nintendo games but I don't think you won't be able to uh, live stream those right uh, copyright true that I, I got no idea how that would go under legal issue but you know what I'm just gonna play Steam so if you guys think that I should play this game and want to donate that game to me I'm open to it I'm open to the idea I don't have Steam sorry oh that's good but James um, could you tell the listeners what would you be doing uh, on the stream Oh, definitely. I will be doing requests. Um, I will be working on requests that I have, uh, I have pending forever. But I will also be drawing requests that people will want to, uh, people who donate, people who donate have the right to ask me to draw something. Awesome. And it has to be something PG because this, this is for children, guys. True indeed, true indeed. So please keep it clean. And uh, it can be whatever you want. It can be pony. It can be video game related. It can be movie related. It can be whatever. Uh, personally, I prefer pony related because they are faster and easier to draw. Uh, but if you want me to draw, I don't know, uh, a video game character doing something from a movie like Samus Aran fighting an alien, that would be cool. So uh, I, I can do that. Awesome. You know, just give him, just give him all three. You know, it's not a choice. You can actually take all three options. Like, <laughs> ponify this poster, and make it twenty percent more awesome. You know, more I explosions. Could <laughs> How about Transformers? <laughs> no, no, we had that discussion before. So I no. will add more explosions to it. Yeah. Like this big, huge mechanical oh, you, no, Celestia uh, comes out. <gasps> Celestia Primus. Oh God, no. So anyway, anyway. Oh yeah. That 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 was that well, that was our projects, and well, I hope you can help us all because you know what, what we're doing here is for a good cause, so we're just gonna move on ahead, and let's move on to the next thing that we have in mind, and well, discussions. And James Cork here says he has something to discuss about. So James, what do yes. you have? I wanted to bring up the newest and uh, uh, the most recent Rainbow Dash Presents video. Uh, Rainbow Dash Presents Bittersweet. Okay, I'm not going to reveal what happens in the video because the less you know about any of the Rainbow Dash Presents series, the better. Uh, <laughs> but Petty Rep and Flim Flum Philosophy, the, well, I think Petty Rep, are the same. Petty Rep is the artist, but Flim Flum Philosophy is the, the group. They, they, they announced that this is going to be the last Rainbow Dash Presents video. And the reasons for this is that they don't want to keep using their creativity to work on something that is legally tied to an individual property. That is, that they don't want to keep doing something that, if they want to get money out of, can get them in legal trouble because it belongs to Hasbro. They want to move on to other things and create other content. That brings up an interesting, an interesting subject on what are we all going to do once we realize that we cannot get enough income out of this fandom or that we cannot uh, get creativity out of this fandom because we are using a property that doesn't belong to us. So I was wondering about that. What would I do after this? And to be honest with you, I have quite a few options because I have the, the graphic designer's degree and I am uh, I'm specialized on publicity, marketing, and, and uh, press editing. And also uh, in uh, edi digital editing. So it's like if all of a sudden I cannot keep doing pony stuff, I will be able to do other stuff. So what about you guys? What would you do when the pony bandwagon finally gets to the last stop? Hmm. This is an interesting topic and one that I haven't... Told ya! <laughs> uh, and one that I have never thought before. So uh, I'm going to hand it on to Daniel first because he seems the one 
to have the vision of what he wants to do. I don't really, but to be honest, um, do you are you looking for the answer of what I want to do or what I wish would happen? No, what do you plan to do after the... I feel like I'm interviewing you guys. No, but it's like, what will you do if you suddenly realize, wow, I have all these ideas and I cannot use them because I keep linking them to this uh, franchise that I don't that I don't own. I should be tr- trying to link it to something that is a completely new IP uh, so I can use it, sell it, and post it all over the place. My uh, my best pony logos, I could totally sell those and put those on, put those on t-shirt, t-shirts, but I can't because they belong to Hasbro. That's the best, that's the, my little pony logo turned into a best pony logo. I cannot sell that to anybody because I don't own the copyright. Hasbro does. So... In that regard, it's like, oh, all right, I guess I won't be able to sell this, so all this time of work has been for nothing. But I like the concept, I might use it for something else. That's okay. that's what I mean. Well, for me, basically, I don't spark a lot of ideas from ponies. I mean, I watch the show because it's, if you want to put in a crude term, ex- escapism for me, because really, I'm sick and tired of the real world, so... And I'm 21. Mm-hmm. This sucks, right? I'm the youngest in the show right now. And um, basically, when I have an idea, it usually goes in the other direction. It's more of when I have a great idea. In order for it to work and for me to be able to put it down, I put ponies into it. <clears throat> so instead of having like an idea that is ponies and I'm thinking, how can I use it outside of the pony fandom? I look for ways to bring my ideas into the pony fandom. But when the pony fandom kind of, you know, when the last firework goes off, I think... I don't know. Maybe I won't. Maybe it'll be difficult because you know the fan base wouldn't be there, and the audience would be much different, and have to face the inevitable real world. But I have plenty of other ideas and plenty of other things I want to do outside the fandom. Really. Well, I didn't want to suggest that the fandom is going to reach its end because Star Wars is a very old fandom and it keeps going. Same with Star Trek. So the fandom is never going to end. A fandom stays. A fandom doesn't die. Fandoms don't die. That's that's the beauty of it. But people move on. That's the important part. Is that it's not that the fandom is going to end. Is that you decide to end your uh your connection with the fandom. Oh, okay, I see. As I said, I don't think I can see that happening yet because I don't. I'm not part of this fandom for. A lot of, um, I mean, I love the fandom, but I also love the show very much. And I said it's pretty much escapism from what, from what real life re- is to me. So I don't see myself recovering from this addiction, if you want to put it that way. That is a very fair way to put it. It is an addiction. Yes, it is. Some people have called it religion, but I won't go that direction. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't want to relate it. But you know what, Dan? In your case, you're currently studying in media. And, well, I think with the pony that we're doing right now, it's kind of in the right direction for you to go ahead with because, well, you're doing media and stuff and we are currently doing media and stuff, PR and stuff, so we get a general idea of what people like. Yeah, it is. And, um, well, like just recently in school, our lecturers wanted us to, because we have this course called Advanced TV Production, and our lecture, because the studio just opened, we're all still new to the equipment. We're still learning how to use it because Taylor's never taught us how to use it. Mm. So we're still learning slowly. So our lecturer said one day, all right, you're going to practice filming a TV show and you're going to take turns. And what happened is that there needs to be something to film. So he sat us down and said, what are you going to do for your final project? And it was like, everybody's got to take turns and we all got grilled right in front there. And so I told him that, you know, my final project will be the promotional material for Cantalot University because... Well, everybody else is like, I'll tell you next week. You know, I'll tell you next week. I'll tell you soon. I'll tell you soon. I'll tell you after the holidays, after the break, after the assignments due. And then I'm like, <laughs> well, I don't want to make, you know, those kind of demo reels and those kind of work that after university, they just end up in a folder sitting on your shelf in the house, not doing anything. I mean, these things, as much as, you know, one day I can, I say, I can see myself leaving this fandom in a way. These things will not, you know, be thrown in the trash can along with it. These are things that I will carry for the rest of my life because these are projects that, well, like, James, I believe that, you know, even if you leave or something, you're not going to, like, throw your DeviantArt account out the window, of course, right? <laughs> you know, uh, years ago before the Pony Thin arrived, I dropped my DeviantArt account. And when the Pony Thin came back, uh, came in, I decided to bring my DeviantArt account back. And so even before, even, even without that, I didn't throw my DeviantArt account out. I'm not going to throw it out with all the stuff that I have uploaded on it already. So yeah, my answer is no. Of course, I'm not going to get rid of my DeviantArt account. Never. Yeah, exactly. Put too much so work into it. It's a part of you, isn't it, in that sense? 
Yes. So in the yes, same way, is. I say that for my, I say that for myself as well. This kind of projects that I do, everything is a part of me, and it's it has a place deep down in my heart. So I also have this policy that I try not to throw out previous works, no matter how embarrassing they may look, because somehow I look back and they just remind me how much I have grown and the mistakes I've learned from. So I never forget what I've done wrong in the past. They wow. are your babies. It's a way to put it. They are your babies. You don't want to get rid of your babies. Of course. Yeah. Wow. Uh, however, awesome. uh, and uh, to bring something uh, regarding the uh, Rainbow Dash Presents, not doing more of the Rainbow Dash Presents videos after Bittersweet, I am having a very familiar and not completely good vibe out of this. And I don't know if you guys remember the Nostalgia Critic. You know the Nostalgia uh, Critic, right? Oh, I yes. Do. Yeah. No, do you remember fan. that? Yeah, do you remember that after the latest, uh, uh, the last year's anniversary, it was to boldly flee. Mm-hmm. Doug Walker decided to end the Nostalgia Critic, leave it there, and he's like, okay, the Nostalgia Critic is done, we are going to do something called Demo Reel. And then Demo Reel bombed spectacularly, like, it completely crashed. It didn't do as, as good as he thought, because people still wanted to watch the Nostalgia Critic. They wanted more than Nostalgia Critic, they didn't want Demo Reel. So he decided to drop Demo Reel and bring the Nostalgia Critic back. I have the feeling that Petty Rep and Flim Flam Philosophy, they are going to try new things, and I am wishing wishing them all the luck, but you really need to have a very original, very good, very awesome idea to succeed. And if you don't have such a thing, you might have to end up coming back to what uh, to what started you. Because Doug Walker was ready to move on from reviewing movies and making nostalgia critics, and the fans kind of brought him back. Mm, that that has sense to it, but um, one thing about uh, life and the way that these a lot of things are working is that you got to be prepared to fail in a lot of cases. And I yes. will, I'm very grateful to this fandom because it has given me the chance to fail at things that I haven't done. Like I tried to get a PonyCon happening in Malaysia and it didn't work. And as much as you know, it was it didn't work out well. I I think I'm very thankful that it happened within a fandom that is a bit more forgiving than the real world. Oh, yes, yes. Many fandoms are not forgiving at all. Uh, okay, here is me. I always throw a rock at the furry fandom, but that's because they gave me 10 years of, of absolute torture before <laughs> I decided to move away from them. So okay. it's like in the, in the furry fandom, there is no so much forgiveness. They will tear you apart. 10 uh, years, however, dude, wow. Yeah, a decade, an entire decade of suffering those guys. And uh, be- besides, I, I'm mostly referring to the Four Affinity community, but they are relentless. They are absolutely hammering their hatred and their despise for you. So when you make a mistake, they always remind you. In the Brony fandom, you make a mistake, they help you out. They are like, we know you... That's not a word! Oh, sorry for that. But yeah, you know, you, we know you screwed up. Uh, but you know what? This is how you have to do things next time. And they help you out. They give you advice. They tell you how to do things. They tell you what not to do. And they tell you what to do. So they help you. So even something, even out of something horrible, something good comes out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's why I'm, that's why I'm, I'm pretty sure that Petty Rep and, and Twin Flam Philosophy are going to do fine after Rainbow Dash Presents. But there's always that nagging possibility that it might not work out. So I hope they are ready to uh, face adversities. Mm, true that. Because with mm-hmm. um, Doug Walker's project that he left the Nostalgia Critic to do Demo Reel, the reason is he felt that the Nostalgia Critic was okay and he wanted to go out on a high. And, well, let's just say this. Quit while you're ahead kind of deal, right? Yeah, yeah. And let's yeah, just say th- this. His project was... Uh, Demo Reel is one of his high-end work that he wanted to do, but it kind of bombed because nobody really liked it, because nobody really liked that character he did. I must be the only person in the planet who genuinely liked Demo Reel. I like Demo Reel too. Because I could appreciate but... the concept and the, and, the, and the work he was putting in it. He was trying to do something original. And he was trying to do something without having to use footage from movies that could cause him copyright problems. And it didn't work because people were... Doug Walker created such a persona with the nostalgia critic that, to the point that people look at him and they don't see Doug Walker anymore. They don't see other characters anymore. They see the nostalgia critic. And that's a problem that people like James Rolfe, who does the angry video game nerd, or, or Noah Antweiler, who does the spoony one, are going to have to face, is that they have linked their faces to a character. And that's what happens with many actors, like Elijah Good being linked to uh, 
to Frodo from Lord of the Rings or Macaulay Culkin being linked to the guy from Home Alone. True. So it is difficult to break out of character. It, is, it was difficult for Doug Walker to break out of the nostalgia critic. That's why he brought him back. Well, true. because true. And, that, and also because of the fans' reaction to it. And after he brought him back, he set new rules for himself where there's no limit to any movie he wants to review. I love the new, the new format that he brought in. Because it's like, okay, uh, full-on movie reviews every two weeks, and every other week I'm going to make a film editorial. And the reviews are more for the people that uh, like the old nostalgia critic, well, you know, the screaming, the yelling, the funny jokes, the Photoshop images, and all that. But the the my favorite parts of the new nostalgia critic are the, the, the editorials. Because he analyzes and he explains his points, being very level-headed and not so much sweating and screaming and yelling, but he actually brings pretty good points. And uh, to the point that I, I, I want to do something similar with, uh, with Pony, that I want to do editorials regarding the show in video, but then we have guys like Digibrony already doing that. Mm-hmm. So it's ah, like even yes. in that aspect, we have we have it covered in the in the fandom. I love Digi Brony, by the way. That guy is fantastic. Yep, he's awesome. True yep. that. True that. Yeah. His cover of Tubby Wubby Pony Wife was one of the best I ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yes. it makes me want to jump up and dance. True. I I don't know with the whole flim flam philosophy um, thing that he says that this is going to be the last. Well, um, he has done other videos too. Some of his real life videos where he recorded with a friend and stuff they're pretty entertaining too so i ha- i have this feeling that whatever he's going to do next is going to be awesome personally i love his let's plays like his uh his let's play of fallout new vegas where he's uh he's playing as queen latifah <laughs> and it's absolutely <laughs> hilarious He's like, hey, I'm Queen Latifah. And he's doing the Rainbow Dash voice. And I'm like, oh my god, this is absolutely funny. I love this. So yeah, the guy has talent enough that uh, he he doesn't only do um, Rainbow Dash Presents, but it's what he's most known for. And that's the key word there. He's the, it, it's his, his most popular thing. So you really need to leap up after, after what the, what's the most popular thing you created. I think this can also bring back to the fact that most of the Brony musician now are kind of tied into what they do. For example, uh, DB Pony, he stated in a Tumblr post once where he said that he's going to kind of slow down on making Pony music and concentrate on more of his original themes. But he won't stop making Pony music. It's just going to be less. Hmm. I mean, it's something like a quite a, how do you say, good transition because... For some reason, I mean, for us, I understand that you're all very big fans of Nostalgia Critic before, but most of the general public and people out there don't like change. That's the thing. So you see violent oh, yeah. changes that happen. If you take them not on a gradual scale, like Alicorn Twilight was quite a violent change. If you ask me, people didn't like it. I didn't like it. But after a while, it sinks in that you can, you can start to accept it. But there are many other things that are really violently changing. Like last night, the government just hiked the sugar price in Malaysia and I got really pissed off. But, um, yeah, oh, people yeah. just don't like violent change. True that. As much as, yeah, you know, they want we to should be, learn to they, like it, we don't. They have to be led into it. They have to, be, there has to be a build up to it. And when it suddenly happens, it just catches them out of guard because they're like, oh, no, what is this? There's something wrong with the house. I don't like change. (laughs) But that too. But you know what? It's just going to be one of those situations where we have to accept it or just support them. In this case, like in the Beast Pony's case, is we have to support whatever he wants. Like if you don't want to listen to his non-brony music, well, don't listen. If somebody wants to, go listen. It's simple as that. Nobody is pointing a gun at your head and say, listen to this or you get shot or something like that. You have the choice. Listeners think they have that ability, but they don't. (laughs) Well, they do. Because when one artist goes down, another one pops up. It's just not the same type of music that you liked previously. But you know what? Try out new talents. They're out there, man. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's true. It's true. One artist goes down and another comes up, but you know what? Those that those uh, that go, they are irreplaceable. Yeah, another one will come out, but it's going to have a much different style. I mean, I don't mean it's going to be less talented. No, sir. Hmm. I just mean it's going to be different. True. And that's why we 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 have to lead them into it. People don't like sudden change, like you said. True. Yeah. But the thing is, also, what I'm trying to state out here is. 
for most bronies because most bronies here they don't like to listen to okay for example let's just put db pony here because he's the guy that we're kind of talking about right now uh, db pony he doesn't want to do any brony music for now let's just say he suddenly wants to do something original like an original sound that doesn't involve ponies but the thing is most of his fans don't appreciate it because I listen to you because of brony music so I want you to keep playing brony music if not I'm not going to listen to anything else so I mean with that kind of attitude well sorry mm. but artists need to do something else too they need to expand their creative juices for people like me if you throw something at me and expect me to adopt it I would but I won't do it with a smile on my face that's what I usually tell people you know people always tell me that I should learn to adapt to change I said I can adapt to change and I will adapt to change if I have to it's just that don't expect me to do it happily I just don't because I'm just human like everyone else I don't like change as well but then yes sir here, here's a question for you if it's a music let's take Tombstone for example he is a very successful uh, EDM artist is that true? Mm-hmm. so quite yes he has this style that Whenever you listen to his track, oh, that's a Tombstone track. So now, let's put the situation of, let's just say Tombstone is not going to do any more pony music because he wants to move on. So he okay. comes up with a new track that does not involve ponies. Would you still listen to it? Yes, I would because, you know, I believe that he has this style on him that makes me want to jump up and dance. Like the same way that Aviators did songs that aren't pony related, but I absolutely love them. And I'm a really big fan of Aviators. I, I, I love Tombstone's music as well. And I love a lot of other musicians out there who, you know, may have set their space in their mind as a brony musician. But when they start to try something else because of the style that and the commitment they put into it is about the same or even more than that of pony music, it will still be a really great thing. I mean, I don't complain when there are no ponies in it. It's hard. I mean, not everything in my life is ponified. So... You know, it's nothing, it's nothing new. I mean, I'm not on some sort of life dependency on MLP. That's when it comes to music. Uh, it's, personally, I think it's very troublesome when it comes to music. Uh, because music is kind of like a broader uh, a market that a lot more people enjoy and a lot more people are willing to throw criticism at it. I don't think it's that troublesome when it comes to art, but I have also seen it happen. Uh, there was an artist on Tumblr who stopped doing pony pictures and started doing uh, Pokemon pictures. And then uh, this artist posted a few comments saying, well, I have a few people sending me, sending me very hurtful messages saying, oh, you're starting doing Pokemon now? I'm going to unfollow you. I only followed you for the ponies, you stupid loser. And I'm like, I'm like that is very rude to say. Uh, but then you also bring people who like other the other stuff that you're drawing. It's like, oh, you're not drawing pony anymore, but you're drawing it so well. I'm going to keep watching you. Or, hey, hey this person is drawing a thing so well. We should watch it. And it's not only pony. Hey, there is some variation there. We should give it a watch. Who knows what's going to come up next? I mean, it's easier on art because uh, music, you think you have to listen, takes three minutes or so. But art is almost bang. You're looking at it. It's barely even two seconds of recognition going on. When you see it, you're like, oh, pony, cute. Oh, non-pony, not so cute. That kind of thing happens in an, in a mind. I mean, it's in my mind. I'm not sure about the artist's mind, but I know that there's art with very, very deep meaning in there. And I love those kind of works as well. So when I see some artwork and I'll be like, hey, that looks cool. I want to go and check it out. And then this artist, I like his style. I'll follow him on, I'll watch him on DeviantArt and I'll see things. I mean, I browse everything on DeviantArt. I go look left, right and center. There's pony art, there's furry art, there's kinky art. There's all sorts of art over there. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, it's a broad variety and I don't lock myself down Deviant Art exclusively for ponies because there are artists out there who draw really, really well and because I can't draw ponies to save my life, you know, my Deviant Art profile is anything but ponies. Mm. I mean, I'm an ambigramist, so yeah, that's the other side of the art world that I'm in. But still, there are people who do really, really great art outside of ponies and sometimes when I see that, my respect for these people shoots through the roof. Because I understand that they're not locked into one style. And they are able to move on to other things. Yep, and that they are willing to face the criticism and people, and people telling them, Oh no, you stop doing this thing. You should do more of this thing and don't start doing this other thing that I don't like because I am an insecure person who... Okay, yeah, I remember what I was going to say before. Is that people who react poorly to changes in subculture and other media, they are very likely to react poorly when a big change happens in their life. Okay. Worst, absolute worst case scenario, something happens in your family. Let's say, okay, let's put something like you've been seeing your pet, let's say your dog. I'm completely talking out of experience here. You've seen your dog. Uh, uh, it's like 
got sick and it started dying and finally it passes away, you have two ways to react. One, okay. you mourn the death of your dog and you are sad about your dog's death, but then you understand that it happened because you have seen the dog getting sick and dying and all that. Of course, it's completely different than if you see your dog getting run over by a car. It happened all of a sudden. There was no build-up to it, so there is, it's more difficult to react to that in a reasonable manner. Of course, you're going to get angry. Your dog just got run over. You didn't see that coming. Your dog was flying. Why did this happen to it? You see what I mean? Yes, I do. It's a sudden change that happens to you. So It's not just human the... nature, actually. It's in general nature. Like I, I remember talking to the audio engineer once um, somewhere when I was performing, and they told me this, that you know, a speaker, in a way, has a, has a funny way of working. If you take a massively loud bass punch and you send it to the speaker, you're most likely going to blow it up. <laughs> but if you take the same bass punch, start it soft, and turn it up slowly all the way to the top, the speaker could possibly handle it. Which was very, which was very interesting to me because I realized, damn it, it, it suddenly occurred to me one day that, damn it, that's happening to me too. Why am I suddenly a speaker? <laughs> <laughs> Still a good analogy. But you, you know what? what? Whatever it is, we should support the artists that we like, no matter what they're doing right now. Because we all know that certain people have certain interests. Because, well, like I said... I do like the video games. I'm playing 25 hours of it. I just got a 3DS just to play Pokemon X. Yeah, I wonder what I could do 25 hours of. Oh god, no. <laughs> just trust me, you don't want to do that. No, 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 no. What, what, what would I love to do so much that I'm willing to do 25 hours of it, gee? Music? Well, I would need a break. My ears would get tired. <laughs> I could do balloon decoration for 25 hours, but my hands would get tired and I probably will faint after blowing up 100 <laughs> balloons. Um, what else? <laughs> Drive for 25 hours, somebody's going to get killed. <laughs> but you know what, Dan? Whatever it is, I'm sure it's going to be awesome. <laughs> yep, I'm still waiting for my calling. Indeed, indeed. But you know what? Like, I haven't got my cutie mark yet. I'm 21. <laughs> oh, God. No, but like I said just now, it's, it's a matter of respecting the people that you like. Yes, yes, definitely. So, James, any last words? Well, <laughs> what? Am I going to die? <laughs> <laughs> no, what I mean for, for, for this thing. Nobody told me. Oh God. So many sudden change, my friend. My sudden life. change. Well, react. <laughs> James. Yeah, choices, James. I think. Snip, snip. No, you know what? I think that re- that defines perfectly well what's going on here with the people accepting sudden change and all that. That people don't get used to uh, enjoy their previous state before the sudden change mm. happens. You know, guys. People who, and this is addressing the people who didn't like Twilight turning into an alicorn. You don't like her turning into an alicorn? Watch any other episodes. True. There's what? Like, you what have you six or four episodes where what she's not What do you think I'm alicorn. doing? <laughs> <laughs> I've, been, I've, been, I've been marathoning uh, four episodes a night up until I reached the season three finale. Wow. And if you don't like Twilight turning into an alicorn, you can commission an artist, or if you're an artist, you can always keep drawing Twilight without wings. It's not like Hasbro is going to come at your house at night, and they're going to plaster fake <laughs> wings on your drawing. <laughs> so, there, no, it it's not that Halloween's anymore. coming <laughs> up, something might happen. Oh, God. But, well, not, not Hasbro, but maybe M.A. Larson will do that. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Franz, watch out, he's around town. <laughs> Yeah, he's going to put wings on the Eiffel Tower and make it fly away. <laughs> Careful. No, Eiffel Tower is the horn of the unicorn that is France. You put the wings oh, no, somewhere he will else. Go, he will go to the Ark of Triumph then. It's easier to make it fly. <laughs> you guys know what the A in Amy Larson is, right? Yeah, the A is for Alicorn. <laughs> I will put it at- That's not a word. But never mind. <laughs> oh, whoa, hey, hey, hey. whoa, whoa, whoa. He's my favorite. Uh, he's my favorite, favorite writer of the entire show. Be careful what you say around that man. That man is a national treasure. <laughs> <laughs> this favorite. Oh, come on, come. On. Tell, tell me your I'm top an Amy five Keating favorite fan. Friendship is Magic episodes. I'm pretty sure. So, so what? I am. A, I also like Cindy Morrow and Megan McCarthy. Yeah, I said it. I like Megan McCarthy. So what? Come at me, bro. I will go. No, I will go. Love party of one of us. Okay, with that, I think we can end this on a high note. Before I like Mary this. Weather Williams. Shots <laughs> fired. <laughs> Let's move on. Let's move on. So, moving on to the next topic is shoutouts. And my shoutout goes to you, James. Thank you for coming on. 
Oh, thank you, Norman. I yes, know you love I me. Know, I love you too. <laughs> Wait, how does that work? Aww. <laughs> but anyway, uh, thanks, James. Thanks for coming on. And my second one goes to you, Kitsune Ritsu, because you helped me a lot and you pushed me to increase my goal. And thanks, man. You're awesome. And another one is to you, Dan. Thanks for being on. No problem. So anyway, what about you, Dan? Um, first of all, I'd like to make a big shout out to the boys at Brony Time Alpha and Five Iron. Congrats on getting Lauren Faust. Woohoo! Yay. Achievement unlocked for you guys, man. Salute. That was amazing. I haven't finished listening to the episode yet, but I will soon. Ooh, some really hate secrets. <laughs> I'm sorry? No, I just heard Pinkie Pie say, I hate secrets. <laughs> no, that was that was Rainbow Dash saying that she hated losing. Sorry. Oh. That was... <laughs> <laughs> that was me. That I, I'm just checking. I'm checking the MLP game. They added these Nightmare Night costumes, and they have Rainbow Dash going around dressed as a Shadow Bolt. It's so mm. awesome. Oh, that's true. So, um, then any more? Yes, one more. Mm. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Norman. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Norman Sanzo. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Norman. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> I am. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> <laughs> well, happy birthday to you, man. I mean, the show comes out exactly on your birthday. So I have yeah. to draw, now I have to draw you something. How am I going to top that? I don't know, man. Well, I'm sure you can. Oh, anyway, thanks, man. Wow. <laughs> I was not expecting that because the date that is recorded is not the same date as we go out. <laughs> I know, but I knew it was like I calculated 28, 29. Hmm. <laughs> oh, but still, thanks, Dan. Thanks. I- no problem. Uh, You're planning ahead rivals that of the Joker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so anyway, James, you, uh, shout outs. Oh. How am I going to top what what Daniel just did? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> any shout out after that one is going to be petty in comparison. <laughs> um, well, I want to give a, good, a big shout out to my good old friend Nick, who keeps my normal compass straight. Uh, he's a great guy and... I want to send him lots of support and lots of uh, good feels. I also want to give a good shout out to my good old friend William, Will, uh, who tries his best to keep me under strain, but he can't because I'm a loose cannon. Uh, and finally, <laughs> I want to give a shout out to my, to my friend Sketchy because Sketchy is and should be everybody's friend because everybody should have a friend like Sketchy. But then he couldn't be as unique as he is. Yep. If you get, just get tired of one Sketchy, you can move on to another Sketchy. <laughs> Because there's so many sketches. This sounds sketchy. Oh, no. Fluttershy is dressed as a play- Fluttershy is dressed as a Playboy bunny. Oh god! What? Okay, <laughs> I I miss Sketchy's voice that pops up in the middle of the chat and there's this seductive voice that comes out. I miss that because <laughs> suddenly you just spring out of nowhere. <laughs> so anyway, James, uh, any more? And then Glad also oh, coming uh, ruin the party or something like that. Hello. And welcome to the Aperture Science Center in Richmond, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> don't know how to do that. I second that, sorry. I won't do it again. I oh, it's a so uh, I'm guessing that's about it, right? Pretty much, unless you want to start talking about uh, yeah. Rule 34 and stuff. We can we can talk about that in the NBA show after dark, yes. but not now. Indeed. So anyway... <laughs> we should do that after Yeah, true, after this, maybe, after this. So anyway, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at the show at gmail.com. And if you like to email us personally, you can reach me at norman at com and daniel at com and charlie at com. You can also reach us on Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at the MBS show. SweetieBot will interact with you. We'll talk to you. We'll also complain about this show and we'll pimp out some stuff like my 25-hour charity or even cancel out you. And you can also follow me at Norman Sanzo. I post pictures of things that I've bought, food, and my little nephew. He's so cute. (laughs) What about you, Dan? Oh, well, you can follow me at 
at St. Pinky, S-T-P-I-N-K-I-E, for your daily dose of perky pessimism and a lot of complaints about Malaysia because, heck, I'm Malaysian. I was born to complain. And, uh, yep, yeah, if you want to follow um, Cantalot University for updates, you can follow them at Cantalot underscore uni. Once again, Cantalot underscore uni. Follow that on Twitter. And, uh, yeah, we'll post up anything you need to know. Just feel free to tweet us if you have any questions or you can email contact at cantalotuniversity.com if you want to ask us any questions. All right, yeah, I'll be sure to put that in the show notes. So what about you, James? Any place they can reach you? Well, if you want me to stop coming to the NBA show, you can tell me to get the hell out of here at James Cork uh, on Twitter or at uh, jamescork.dvnr.com or on askmovieslate.tumblr.com. Well, I'm sure they won't send us any email because I haven't been receiving any. So if you really don't like James to be on, do email us, which I'm sure you won't. <laughs> So suddenly next week 3,000 emails oh my god get rid of that bloody Spaniard <laughs> this is the MBS show it's the Malaysian Burning Society show not the Malaysian boys and Spanish dude show <laughs> you know what? he's invading your country again <laughs> he's invading your country oh Taking great yeah that's true <laughs> he's going to take your women and your food get rid of him <laughs> he's clapping in your window <laughs> okay 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 anyway you're snatching your ponies up <laughs> okay on that, also, please subscribe and raise our side. He's the scout. More are going to come. Kill him. <laughs> Kill him before it's too late. <laughs> He's going to warn the army. <laughs> and also, please subscribe. We don't speak. We don't speak Espanol. Run! <laughs> we cannot negotiate. We, they are going to come down as to a life of bullfighting <laughs> and flamenco. <laughs> oh, boys. <laughs> Anyway, and also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes and also Stitcher Radio and also like our Facebook page. Yes, we have the Facebooks. Link will be provided in show notes. So, I have been Norman Sanzo. And I have been Daniel Anthony. And I have been Spanish Conquistador James Cork. And, si, senor, we shall see you again next week. Great. Now go <laughs> work on the fields, you peasant. Si, senor. <laughs> Dude, it's three in the morning. <laughs> okay, my guys. We can't see. That's not a word. I don't care. I'm a villain of El Zorro. You have to keep working until you find out. Uh, well, whatever. We don't find them. Anyway. <laughs> Joke's dead. Keep, let's finish the show, Norman.
So anyway, let's move on to the next topic. And the next topic is news time. In today's news time, and to play reveals information on My Little Pony CCG Team Dex. Dex. Yes, that's what I mean. Dex. Dex. Yes, Dex. <laughs> you sounded like... That's not a word! But I'm, I'm not saying... That's not okay. a word! <laughs> PG, PG show, man. What the hell? I know. That's the best part about editing the show is I can do this later on. No, check but out. anyway... Yeah, we, can, we, we can change our rating in the middle of the show. Product not yet rated. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway uh, That's what happens when people make movies They start as PG-13 and then they turn into rated R They're like, what happened? <laughs> it's like, we showed boobs for like five minutes We're Sorry we didn't Five minutes? Need that's to. a long time <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's enough <laughs> <laughs> So anyway Looking at the price here, it's not that bad Because according to the Enterplay website You can get the team deck for... Give me a second because my internet is redirecting me to the site and it's loading really slow. So editing this part is going to be really funny. Or oh, I could just use this as a blooper reel because people will be wondering, what the hell am I saying this long? It's like taking me, what, a few minutes or a few seconds? Why are you not loading? No, today in the NBA show, Norman loses his... That's not a word! <laughs> okay, there you are. That's not a word! Okay, um... <laughs> 